In this video, I'm gonna show you how to trade on chain utilizing GMX. Now this is a protocol I'm pretty sure most people have heard of at this point in time due to the fact it's had a pretty meteoric rise through the cryptocurrency space. And with more centralized exchanges showing issues, people are gonna to move to decentralized solutions for their trading. So let's get to grips with GMX here and highlight some of the unique selling points. Namely, the first thing is you don't need a username, a password, or KYC. You simply connect your wallet to the GMX exchange and you can get going. The exchange will allow you to do swaps. So your typical, you know, trade one crypto for another, but also perpetual swaps as well. We'll explain those in just a second. But just looking over to the right-hand side here, you can see the Arbitrum symbol and Arbiscan here. This is Arbitrum's biggest DAP by user number and volume here. So Arbitrum is an Ethereum layer two scaling solution, one that you need to get to grips with and they do have a Arbitrum token airdrop coming at some point and so having a play around on Arbitrum itself and utilizing maybe some of the big dApps like this one here could well get you an airdrop of the RB token which will probably be very valuable in the future. So if you can play along with today's video utilize maybe just a small amount of funds to get used to using Arbitrum, get used to using GMX and maybe you can get a bit of an airdrop at some point. Now first things first I'll go ahead from CoinGecko and book mark the website so control and click on gmx.io and i'll open it up and then save this as a bookmark a load of DeFi protocols do get compromised on the front end and so just having it bookmarked already from a reputable source is one way to ensure you don't get rugged so on the main website here we can see decentralized perpetual exchange you can now trade up to 50x leverage long or short uh, this is up from 30x leverage a recent addition to this so if you are a real dgen trader and a bit of a gambler there you can go to your heart's content at 50x leverage crazy stuff you can see the user stats here and some of the reasons why this is a good exchange they use things such as an aggregation of high quality price oracles to keep positions safe from temporary wicks down like you see on some exchanges on centralized exchanges these scam wicks that can wipe out leverage traders and you can also enter and exit with minimal price impacts due to the way that this is actually set up utilizing the glp token which is the liquidity provider token of this exchange all leverage trades are done against that pool of assets a really innovative feature. This means you get the price you're quoted and you don't have any huge slippage no matter how big your trade is. And then of course on the right hand side simple swaps as well. So this would be mainly for the investors if you just want to do a simple swap for example maybe start accumulating some Ethereum on Arbitrum. It's good to get to know how to use the exchange here for these swaps and as you can see available on Arbitrum but also on Avalanche as well. The gas token on Arbitrum ETH, gas token on Avalanche AVAX. But real quick, what the heck is a perpetual swap for those who do not know? So a perpetual swap is similar to a futures contract, but typically a futures contract has an expiry date. Uh, but with perpetuals, i.e. in perpetuity, there is no expiry date on these. So you just go long and short forever, essentially, unless you get liquidated or you make serious bank. Now, this form of leverage trading requires you to have a funding rate in place. So on the hour, every hour, you get charged a fee on your position in order to keep it open because you're essentially borrowing more assets than you have in order to lever up and get that 30, 50x exposure or whatever you may be doing. But we'll have a little look at the funding rate and how this works in just a moment. Now, this website is portal.arbitrum.one. I'll leave all the links that I'm using in today's video as the pinned comment down below for you guys. But this is essentially the gateway to the Arbitrum ecosystem. You'll see I've highlighted bridges here, looking at all the various bridges to get my funds from Ethereum here over to the Arbitrum L2. And right at the top right hand corner, it says view token bridge here. And this takes you to the standard bridge, bridge.arbitrum.io. This is the bridge I use to get some funds from ETH mainnet over to this L2. So I'm gonna show you how this works. Essentially what we need to do first and foremost is connect our wallet. I'm gonna connect my MetaMask here. This is just a test account I'm using here. If I was gonna do any sizable trading, I would be connecting my ledger device to the MetaMask. And from here, you can see my balance on ETH mainnet here, just around 5% of an Ethereum and I want to send it to the Arbitrum layer two environment here. You can see I've got pretty much 0.01 of an ETH on there that I've already moved over. But what we're going to do is just ship over 0.02 Ethereum. So 2% of an Ether about to get sent. Then we can see the facts and figures, $23 worth of ETH being shipped over. I'll pay $1.25 in gas. That fee coming from the L1 gas fee, it says the L2 gas fee is currently zero. And so my total spend is 0.021 Ethereum.
Ethereum. So you just click on move funds to Arbitrum 1 and just confirm that transaction within the MetaMask application there. So this typically takes around 10 to 15 minutes. You'll first get the transaction approved on Mainnet and then you'll get the transaction approved on Arbitrum. It's a little bit of a slow one. And of course, what we can do to track this is go over to Arbiscan, pop in my Ethereum address and then see when the funds arrive. So you should be very capable of doing that. It's very simple and easy to do. We're going to now go back to the CoinGecko page and then either select it directly from here or from your bookmarks. We're going to go to gmx.io once again and this time over to launch app. It's going to give you a bit of a warning here and you press agree and enter the application and now we're presented with this screen and i'm just going to adjust some settings here so you can actually see everything and make myself a little bit smaller so from the website now we can see we need to connect our wallet to either arbitrum or avax we're going to go on arbitrum connect wallet i'm selecting metamask here logging in and changing the network from eth mainnet to arbitrum so let's quickly roll through the different features on here starting with the top left hand corner we have dashboard this essentially has a load of stats user stats platform stats and token stats within this you can see them all here you can see the two tokens gmx token this accrues 30 percent of all platform revenues and the glp token which accumulates 70 percent of all platform revenues making this a very good DeFi protocol 100 of all platform revenues go back to various token holders here the glp token is the one we trade against so there's no actual counterparty in terms of another person we trade against we trade against this pool of assets composed of the following ETH, Bitcoin, Chainlink, Uniswap, USDC, Tether, DAI and some fracks in here in these various weightings. So if you win a trade you actually win from the GLP pool and if you lose a trade you end up contributing to the GLP pool and making it even bigger. Over time house wins, the casino wins and so the GLP pool has been growing and I guess with the 50x leverage now available a lot more people will get wrecked and this is essentially a very profitable DeFi protocol. Next up we have the earn tab so this is where you actually want to stake your GM or your GLP tokens, all the stats available on here. What is the current APR? How well is it doing? Is there any alpha to be found from this? You know, check this all out in your own time, but those are around the tokens there. You then have the buy button. So if you want to buy some GMX or GLP, this isn't really the subject of today's video, but if you want me to go over the tokenomics of these, drop a comment down below. You then have the referrals tab and I'll drop my referral link down below and that will get you 5% off of any fees you have to pay when utilizing this exchange. Then we have the ecosystem. So a load of GMX pages here, things like community projects, stats, trackers, lots of very cool pieces of information. But let's pop back to the trade button here. So let's start with swaps, the very simplest format here. Uh, so essentially you can do a market order. So taking the current price or you can do a limit order as well. Now, what we're going to notice here is there's not that many tokens available to be purchased. So they only use the creme de la creme of assets. You're not going to get all your favorite shit coins on here. ETH, Wrapped ETH, Bitcoin, Chainlink, Uniswap, USDC, USDT, DAI, and FRAX. If you swap over to AVAX, so the Avalanche ecosystem here, you have AVAX, Wrapped AVAX, ETH, Bitcoin, Wrapped Bitcoin, USDC, and USDCE. So making a swap on here is pretty self-explanatory. So for example, we've got some Ethereum in the wallet here. Maybe we want to receive some Uniswap in return, go to Uni. If I click on max, it's going to take my full allocation, less any gas required, and show me how many Uni tokens I can buy. So roughly 112 bucks worth of Ethereum will be swapped into 20 Uniswap tokens with very little price impact there between the two. There's also a fee down here for swaps. It's roughly 0.38% at this current time. So around 42 cents on this trade size and if we continue to scroll down you can also see the uni price and the available liquidity so there's a lot of liquidity on here so if you want to start accumulating quite heavily for some of these coins uh, you can do this especially on arbitrum a lot of liquidity on there so if i want to do this as a market order i would click market and then have no option to actually get a better ratio between the two if I want to do a limit, I can get a better ratio. You can see the current ratio here is 212 Uniswap per one ETH. Maybe if I want to get a better ratio, say 220 Uni per ETH, I could tap that in and enable the order. There's no guarantee that this does go through. It depends on the Oracle actually finding that price. 
If it's just a quick wick down, it may not execute. So a few things to be wary of in there. And you'd have to accept the terms to actually go ahead with this. So tick and enable. And because this is on chain to enable the smart contract to do that, you have to pay a small gas fee here and press confirm. Any open positions or orders will show down here, just like a typical centralized exchange. But the swap part of this is pretty self-explanatory. Let's have a little look at shorting or longing the markets. So if we want to go long on a perpetual swap here, this means we're betting on the fact we want prices to go up. Say as an example, Ethereum is going to go up from here. And so if we are correct, we go along with some leverage. If the price of Ethereum increases, we make a profit. And on the flip side, if we want to short the market here, we're going to bet on the fact Ethereum is going to go down in price. If it does go down in price, we make a profit when the price goes down, but we move closer to liquidation when the price moves against us and goes up. One thing to note here, if you go along on the market, you'll be paid out in the token you're longing. So for example, if I'm longing ETH, price goes up, say by 10%, and I've got a bit of leverage on there, say 2x leverage, I make 20%, it'll pay me out in more Ethereum tokens. But if you go short on the market, the calculation is all in dollars. You will pay in dollars and you'll be paid out in dollars. Again, with both of these, you can do a market order here. So taking from the current market price, going long or short, but you can also do a limit as well and potentially go long or short from a different price to where we're at. Just gonna show you how to do a market one just because it's a lot easier. And for those who are not advanced traders, uh, so what we're going to do here is actually go short on ETH. So if I enter 0 0.05, that is roughly 58 bucks in ETH. I'm willing to short here at the current market price. It's currently around 11.74. And then you have the slider here for the amount of leverage. So this gives you additional price exposure. So if I went to 10X, say around here, I'm now short to around the tune of 580 bucks. So you can see utilizing this leverage gives you more price exposure. But if I just scroll things down a little bit here, we can see the other parts to the puzzle. Collateral, as I said, for going short is in dollars. So it's gonna convert my ETH to USDC. The amount of leverage here is 10X exposure. My entry price, 11.75, the current market price. I will be liquidated if the price goes against me up to 1,283 bucks. So if it went to that price, my whole position goes to zero and my GLP token holders make a nice profit off of me. Hovering over the fees, you can see USDC is required for collateral here. I'll swap ETH to USDC, that'll cost me 17 cents. And then the position fee, 0.1% of the size is 58 cents. So on opening a position, you pay 0.1% on the actual amount of your total position. And then when you want to close out the position, you'll pay 0.1% again on the position amount. So fees to enter and to exit and also the gas costs as well to be factored in. But if you're doing any form of size here on Arbitrum, it is very cheap in comparison to ETH mainnet, but this is something new to factor in and a bit of a differentiator from centralized exchanges where you wouldn't have to pay a gas fee on top. And then if we scroll down further, you can see the position here. My entry price is the current market price. There's a borrowing fee. So this is the amount you'll have to pay per hour to open this position up. So 0.0055% per hour as because I'm borrowing collateral from the GLP pool here to get that 10x exposure. It also shows us how much of an availability for liquidity there is on this position. So this essentially is our funding rate here and we might have to top this up with collateral. So say for example, Ethereum starts to really tank from here. I wanna keep that 10x short exposure going, but maybe my underlying collateral starts to run out because I haven't put much on here. I may need to top this up and manage this position manually. So that's the position we've set up here. You have to click on enable leverage for the first time and then approve a smart contract. Again, a small fee involved. Press confirm to go through with that. And now that's confirmed, I can short ETH on 10x leverage. And it shows me a printout here of all the factors, what I'm actually signing up for and how this actually works. So to confirm, press short and then approve this in the wallet. Now on the chart, what you can do here is see our open positions. And what you can also do is click this button here, chart positions, and it will show our open position here at 11.75.40 and the price at which I will be liquidated 
1281.20. If I wanna close out the position, I have to go through the close button here, uh, but this is where you can actually do a bit of a take profit or stop loss. So say I wanna close the position out immediately at the current market price, I click on max here, and this currently would be a bit of a losing trade for me. I'd only receive 57 bucks back, and you can see within this the fees that have just been accrued and due to be paid from this position, or I can do a trigger order here. So this essentially is a take profit. So on my position here, I could take profit at say a price of 1150. So if ETH goes down to 1,150 bucks here, you can see the calculations. This would essentially give me a profit of 13 bucks minus some fees. I'd receive back around $70. So I could enable this order and then it will get me out of the market at this price here if it is hit. Now, just going back to those open positions here, you can see the edit collateral button as well. So you may need to top up some collateral. So in this case, I would need to top up dollars for going short. This would mean that if I'm getting close to my liquidation price here, maybe I'll top up by 10 bucks, I can move my liquidation price to a higher amount. So if I've got conviction in this trade, I'll top that back up and move me away from being liquidated if the market is starting to move against me. And on the flip side, you can withdraw some collateral out of the trade as well. And this does the inverse of that, i.e. my liquidation price gets a bit lower, but I can take some money off the table. And this also causes the leverage position to be even higher as the calculation is based on the original order that went through. But I think for most people, they'll just be sat here looking at their open positions and seeing what the PL is and maybe closing out when they're happy with their profit margin. So that was short, long, pretty much the same thing, but instead of using just stable coins, you can then use the actual token, the collateral itself to long the market with, and rather than being paid out in stables, you'll be paid out in that asset as well. So hopefully this served as a good introduction, a bit of a flavor as to how to utilize an on-chain perpetual swap and token swapping platform. And so you can feel a bit confident in using on-chain solutions in DeFi rather than using CeFi. All the instructions will be in the pinned comment down below. If you use my referral link, that will help me out. And remember there is an Arbitrum token airdrop coming up at some point. So you probably wanna ship some funds over here and have a play around so you don't feel the FOMO at a later date. Like and subscribe guys, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.